on today's show. I've got lots of news about Tesla, in particular, how the hauls down battery has just paid for itself. Welcome everyone, my name is Chris and this is your show about everything happening in the space of renewable technologies like electric vehicles, battery, solar, wind power and well more. If you're new to the channel, welcome, consider subscribing. If you want to join these awesome individuals over here on Patreon, please do. You get early access, behind the scenes, polls, news and stuff that you just don't get here. And thanks also to Ashley Hill, Nigel Farrier and Tessa Nagon for being my producer level Patreons. Alright, let's get straight to the news shall we? Tesla battery day is delayed, or is it? Elon Musk tweeted on Friday the 14th of May, we're going to have to push out the date or attendance will be very low, maybe in two parts, webcast next month and in-person event a few months later. Uh, Elon, anything that you or Tesla would say would be watched by many. Indeed, like the Model 3 unveiling has more than like 4 million views. So importantly, do you really need people to be there? Because you know what? Your customers, uh, media, and more importantly, investors, they will tune in. But nonetheless, you still think you need a crowd, so oh, so be it. But Tesla, look, look to like, um, what, maybe... Apple? Yeah, Apple. They've announced that they're going to be holding their Worldwide Developer Conference. That's normally like a mixture of like free and paid events. And well, this year, they're doing it all online for free for everybody. So, I don't know. I think it's an opportunity missed. But that didn't stop a lot of people, uh, some people like this, who think they've already got the scoop on what will be unveiled at the battery day. In sources close to Tesla, that read that's like someone who may or may not actually have connections with Tesla and it pieced a few things together and it started some rumors. So with that said, and I use extreme caution on this story because well, this will not age well. So I'm gonna whack the date down here, okay? Reteurs reported on Friday the 15th of May that Tesla plans to introduce a new low cost long life battery in its Model 3 sedan in China later this year or maybe early next year, that it expects will bring down the cost of electric vehicles in line with, well, conventional cars. The new 1 million mile battery, jointly developed by China's contemporary Amperex technology, or cattle as we like to call them, has greater energy density and storage capacity, and will obviously lower costs through low cobalt and also cobalt free battery chemistries. And well, the use of chemical additives, materials and coatings that will reduce the internal stress and enable these batteries to store more energy for longer periods. Additionally, Cattle has actually developed a simpler and less expensive way of packaging battery cells called cell to pack that will eliminate the middle step of bundling cells. Now, there is more to this story, but I think these points are perhaps the most likely what will come out of Battery Day, but when we see it, that is. So if you are interested, please follow the links down below, and we'll, yeah, there you'll find that story as well as many others that I've talked to today. Tasmania, you know that awesome island down the bottom of Australia? And folks, visit it when you can. Yeah, when this all gets over. Mm. They've announced that in addition to being the first in Australia to run on 100% renewals by 2022, that by 2040, they will more than double the energy requirements of the state, so as to take the title of the Battery of the Nation. I shot this clip just yesterday, which shows Tasmania running on 100% renewable power using its hydroelectric system, wind power, and a mix of small and large scale solar. Indeed, for 2019, they achieved like a 95% efficiency rating. And well, hey Aussie, I guess this and your dozen other countries and cities don't actually count in displacing coal and gas. <laughs> no. Well, will I ever give up on saying that sort of stuff? Probably not. Not for this episode, at least. Anyway. Six and a half hours later. This new energy target, dubbed TRET, that is the Tasmanian Renewable Energy Target, is beyond any other target contemplated by a state or federal government in Australia or even overseas for that matter, and will go a long way to show up electricity power supplies for not only themselves, but also the eastern states of Australia, which are connected to one of the largest grids in the world. And this is how it should be done. It's, also, it's to talk about redundancy and having capacity to spare. And this is what renewables looks like. So more done and more on this to come. The Tesla Hornsdale battery in South Australia has in just two years of operation paid for itself. Ching! Money in the bank, right? Two years. 
The 96 million dollar or 100 megawatt, not 129 megawatt hour battery is currently being expanded to like 150 megawatts and will be complete in June. And in just two years to date, it's already paid off its initial investment for that 100 megawatts. So Neon, I think that's a pronouncer, they're the French based owner and operator of this big battery. They revealed that they've had a five fold increase in revenues for the first quarter of 2022 excuse me, for 2020, due to the battery's need to keep the lights on following a tornado, which tore down the main transmission link between Victoria and South Australia late January this year. Now, when this did occur, and this was actually detailed in the Renewed Economy website, by the way, by uh, Giles Parkinson, awesome job, Giles, keep it up. He, he does like a really good job, by the way, of explaining uh, a lot more detail that I'm just going to glance over very briefly here, so please do go read it. So in his article, he talks about how the Hornsdale battery, as well as two others, um, were used by AMO to minimize use of gas power plants to provide about $150 million in savings to consumers. It demonstrates how grid batteries provide energy security and lower prices to people like you and me. And they provide a return on investment for big business. So Scotty from marketing. By all means, have the world's biggest battery, have the world's biggest banana, have the world's biggest prawn. Um, like we have on the roadside, along the highways, around the country. But that's not solving the problem. Um, this comment hasn't aged very well, has it? Okay, time for one of my favourite segments, and it's mail time. Last week, I brought you news of Lexus, who announced that the Lexus UX300e was going to have a massive battery warranty of like 10 years or 1 million kilometres, to which Ray Johnson said this, I think the 10 year 1 million mile battery warranty will have a caveat in the details because I might say that it can degrade by up to 70% before it's classed as needing warranty repairs. Good point Ray, and actually this is something that like almost all car makers are doing. And so I guess you would have to experience some sort of significant drop in range before they would actually give you a new one for free. On the same show, I announced Mini SE pricing for Australia which starts at $59,000 Australian. And well, there were a few comments like this from Ken Dibble who said, BMW Mini is a little disappointing. Ionic would beat it for me. Or this from Hadtobe stating that I can get 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in the same time with my ICE car with a range of 750 kilometers. The price really needs to come down for any penetration to occur. Agreed about the price. Without incentives, this and more other affordable electric cars won't get off the ground. I've been thinking that this last week that BMW's Mini Cooper SE is maybe just maybe a compliance car, which is required in Europe because, well, over there, they've got very stringent petrol and emission requirements. So this will add to the total fleet, meaning that cars like this, they can still keep making and putting them out as long as they possibly can. All right, short and sweet mail time this week. And if you do have any questions or comments, do put them down below. I'll review as many as I can and I'll reply to some of them. So yeah, keep them coming. Time for a quick round of bites. Ford has announced that its all-electric Mustang Mach-E will receive regular over-the-air updates that can be done from anywhere, including, get this, even in your own home. Wow, wonder who thought of that before. Updates will include performance enhancements and entirely new features that might not even exist when customers take first delivery of their vehicles and can set to occur automatically overnight. The Mackie, which is still slated for release in the US in late 2020, and whilst a date is not set for Australia yet, it's not very clear, no, I wish it was. Anyway, Ford said that, uh, that a right-hand drive version would be released, and from my math, it's going to be about, well, $100,000 Australian, based upon the $45,000 US starting price. Polish electric vehicle developer Trigo has unveiled the Trigo. Hmm, is that right? I'm not very sure about that one. But anyway, it's like an electric motorbike thingy. Capable of traveling 100 kilometers on one charge from an eight kilowatt hour battery. The two electric motors provide 18 kilowatts of power, which doesn't sound like a lot, but for a motorbike or scooter, that's actually pretty, pretty decent. It should be able to keep up with traffic. Speaking of which, check out this party trick. Yep, it's just tapped in its front tires to help with filtering or lane splitting by reducing its width from like 148 centimeters down to 86 centimeters. Commercial models are now ready for most markets and will, production will begin in full in 2021. BYD has announced that the Han EV, the company's pure electric flagship model, aimed squarely at the premium luxury end of the market, is, well, look pretty good looking. With its curved front end, high waistline and plush interior, 
It's got a range of about 605 kilometers and a 0 to 100 time of 3.9 seconds. The Hound EV will also feature D Pilot or Die Pilot. Not sure how, how they want us to say that, but nonetheless, it's like a, a self learning intelligent driving assistance system that will take advantage of 5G, 5G technology. The Hound EV is scheduled to receive its introduction to China towards the end of 2020, in like June. Jeez, that's next month. And well, the Australian market is being covered by the Adelaide firm Avant, who last year signed like a memorandum of understanding with BYD to collaborate on building their cars out here in South Australia. And one last story, what do you think this is? This is an Australia Post electric tricycle. As part of Ozpost's mission to reduce its carbon emissions by 25% in 2020, they've purchased 163 of these Swiss-designed delivery vehicles to Canberra which for my inter international viewers is actually our capital city with a population of almost 400,000 and a size of 800 square kilometers which coincidentally runs at 100% renewable power. Yeah, awesome stuff. Now, capable of carrying 195 kilos, the trike is powered by a lithium battery with a maximum range of 100 kilometers and a top speed of 45 kilometers per hour. And it's used by Australia Post for the last mile delivery which they say is actually safer and well more stable than the traditional posty motorbikes. Okay, definitely a short and sweet episode today. Um, if you haven't already, please do subscribe. It does help the channel. Otherwise, you know, leave me a comment, give it a thumbs up, share it on your socials, all that sort of jazz. It's all good stuff. If you want to take it to the next level, join me over here on Patreon. And otherwise, you know what you can do? You be good and you be great.